Parts 1 through 3 of Kashtanka. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Kashtanka by Anton Chekhov. Translated by Constance Garnett. Parts 1 through 3. Kashtanka, a story. Part 1. Misbehavior. A young dog, a reddish mongrel between a dachshund and a yard dog, very like a fox in face, was running up and down the pavement, looking uneasily from side to side. From time to time she stopped and, whining and lifting first one chilled paw and then another, tried to make up her mind how it could have happened that she was lost. She remembered very well how she had passed the day, and how in the end she had found herself on this unfamiliar pavement. The day had begun by her master, Luka Alexandrich's, putting on his hat, taking something wooden under his arm, wrapped up in a red handkerchief, and calling, Kashtanka, come along. Hearing her name, the mongrel had come out from under the work-table, where she slept on the shavings, stretched herself voluptuously, and run after her master. The people Luka Alexandrich worked for lived a very long way off, so that before he could get to any one of them, the carpenter had several times to step into a tavern to fortify himself. Kashtanka remembered that on the way she had behaved extremely improperly. In her delight that she was being taken for a walk, she jumped about, dashed, barking after the trains, ran into yards, and chased other dogs. The carpenter was continually losing sight of her, stopping and angrily shouting at her. Once he had even, with an expression of fury in his face, taken her fox-like ear in his fist, smacked her, and said emphatically, Plague take you, you pest! After having left the work where it had been bespoken, Luka Alexandrich went into his sister's, and there had something to eat and drink. From his sister's he had gone to see a bookbinder he knew, from the bookbinder's to a tavern, from the tavern to another crony's, and so on. In short, by the time Kashtanka found herself on the unfamiliar pavement, it was getting dusk, and the carpenter was as drunk as a cobbler. He was waving his arms and, breathing heavily, muttered, In sin my mother bore me. Ah, sins, sins! Here now we are walking along the street and looking at the street lamps. But when we die we shall burn in a fiery Gehenna. Or he fell into a good-natured tone called Kashtanka to him and said to her, You, Kashtanka, are an insect of a creature and nothing else. Beside a man you are much the same as a joiner beside a cabinet-maker. While he talked to her in that way there was suddenly a burst of music. Kashtanka looked round and saw that a regiment of soldiers was coming straight towards her. Unable to endure the music which unhinged her nerves, she turned round and round and wailed. To her great surprise, the carpenter, instead of being frightened, whining and barking, gave a broad grin, drew himself up to attention, and saluted with all his five fingers. Seeing that her master did not protest, Kashtanka whined louder than ever, and dashed across the road to the opposite pavement. When she recovered herself, the band was not playing, and the regiment was no longer there. She ran across the road to the spot where she had left her master but alas, the carpenter was no longer there. She dashed forward, then back again, and ran across the road once more. But the carpenter seemed to have vanished into the earth. Kashtanka began sniffing the pavement, hoping to find her master by the scent of his tracks, but some wretch had been that way just before in new rubber galoshes, and now all delicate scents were mixed with an acute stench of India rubber, so that it was impossible to make out anything. Kashtanka ran up and down, and did not find her master, and meanwhile it had got dark. The street lamps were lighted on both sides of the road, and lights appeared in the windows. Big fluffy snowflakes were falling and painting white the pavement. The horses' backs and the cabmen's caps, and the darker the evening grew, the whiter were all these objects. Unknown customers kept walking incessantly to and fro, obstructing her field of vision and shoving against her with their feet. All mankind, Kashtanka, divided into two uneven parts, masters and customers. Between them there was an essential difference. The first had the right to beat her, and the second she had the right to nip by the calves of their legs. These customers were hurrying off somewhere and paid no attention to her. 
when it got quite dark kashtanka was overcome by despair and horror she huddled up in an entrance and began whining piteously the long day's journeying with luka alexandritch had exhausted her her ears and her paws were freezing and what was more she was terribly hungry only twice in the whole day had she tasted a morsel she had eaten a little paste at a bookbinder's and in one of the taverns she had found a sausage skin on the floor near the counter that was all if she had been a human being she would have certainly thought no it is impossible to live like this i must shoot myself part two a mysterious stranger but she thought of nothing she simply whined when her head and back were entirely plastered over with the soft feathery snow and she had sunk into a painful doze of exhaustion all at once the door of the entrance clicked creaked and struck her on the side she jumped up a man belonging to the class of customers came out as kashtanka whined and got under his feet he could not help noticing her he bent down to her and asked doggy where do you come from have i hurt you oh poor thing poor thing come don't be cross don't be cross i am sorry kashtanka looked at the stranger through the snowflakes that hung on her eyelashes and saw before her a short fat little man with a plump shaven face wearing a top hat and a fur coat that swung open what are you whining for he went on knocking the snow off her back with his fingers where is your master i suppose you are lost ah poor doggy what are we going to do now catching in the stranger's voice a warm cordial note kashtanka licked his hand and whined still more pitifully oh you nice funny thing said the stranger a regular fox well there's nothing for it you must come along with me perhaps you will be of use for something well he clicked with his lips and made a sign to kashtanka with his hand which could only mean one thing come along kashtanka went not more than half an hour later she was sitting on the floor in a big light room and leaning her head against her side was looking with tenderness and curiosity at the stranger who was sitting at the table dining he ate and threw pieces to her at first he gave her bread and the green rind of cheese then a piece of meat half a pie and chicken bones while through hunger she ate so quickly that she had not time to distinguish the taste and the more she ate the more acute was the feeling of hunger your masters don't feed you properly said the stranger seeing with what ferocious greediness she swallowed the morsels without munching them and how thin you are nothing but skin and bones kashtanka ate a great deal and yet did not satisfy her hunger but was simply stupefied with eating after dinner she lay down in the middle of the room stretched her legs and conscious of an agreeable weariness all over her body wagged her tail while her new master lounging in an easy chair smoked a cigar she wagged her tail and considered the question whether it was better at the stranger's or at the carpenter's the stranger's surroundings were poor and ugly besides the easy chairs the sofa the lamps and the rugs there was nothing and the room seemed empty at the carpenter's the whole place was stuffed full of things he had a table a bench a heap of shavings planes chisels saws a cage with a goldfinch a basin the stranger's room smelt of nothing while there was always a thick fog in the carpenter's room and a glorious smell of glue varnish and shavings on the other hand the stranger had one great superiority he gave her a great deal to eat and to do him full justice when kashtanka sat facing the table and looking wistfully at him he did not once hit or kick her and did not once shout go away damned brute when he had finished his cigar her new master went out and a minute later came back holding a little mattress in his hands hey you dog come here he said laying the mattress in the corner near the dog lie down here go to sleep then he put out the lamp and went away kashtanka lay down on the mattress and shut her eyes the sound of a bark rose from the street and she would have liked to answer it but all at once she was overcome with unexpected melancholy she thought of luka alexandritch of his son fedushka and her snug little place under the bench 
she remembered on the long winter evenings when the carpenter was planing or reading the paper aloud fedyushka usually played with her he used to pull her from under the bench by her hind legs and play such tricks with her that she saw green before her eyes and ached in every joint he would make her walk on her hind legs use her as a bell that is shake her violently by the tail so that she squealed and barked and give her tobacco to sniff the following trick was particularly agonizing fedyushka would tie a piece of meat to a thread and give it to kashtanka and then when she had swallowed it he would with a loud laugh pull it back again from her stomach and the more lurid were her memories the more loudly and miserably kashtanka whined but soon exhaustion and warmth prevailed over melancholy she began to fall asleep dogs ran by in her imagination among them a shaggy old poodle whom she had seen that day in the street with a white patch on his eye and tufts of wool by his nose fedyushka ran after the poodle with a chisel in his hand then all at once he too was covered with shaggy wool and began merrily barking beside kashtanka kashtanka and he good-naturedly sniffed each other's noses and merrily ran down the street part three new and very agreeable acquaintances when kashtanka woke up it was already light and a sound rose from the street such as only comes in the daytime there was not a soul in the room kashtanka stretched yawned and cross and ill-humoured walked about the room she sniffed the corners and the furniture looked into the passage and found nothing of interest there besides the door that led into the passage there was another door after thinking a little kashtanka scratched on it with both paws opened it and went into the adjoining room here on the bed covered with a rug a customer in whom she recognized the stranger of yesterday lay asleep Er, she growled but recollecting yesterday's dinner wagged her tail and began sniffing she sniffed the stranger's clothes and boots and thought they smelt of horses in the bedroom was another door also closed kashtanka scratched at the door leaned her chest against it opened it and was instantly aware of a strange and very suspicious smell foreseeing an unpleasant encounter growling and looking about her kashtanka walked into a little room with a dirty wallpaper and drew back in alarm she saw something surprising and terrible a grey gander came straight towards her hissing with its neck bowed down to the floor and its wings outspread not far from him on a little mattress lay a white tomcat seeing kashtanka he jumped up arched his back wagged his tail with his hair standing on end and he too hissed at her the dog was frightened in earnest but not caring to betray her alarm began barking loudly and dashed at the cat the cat arched his back more than ever mewed and gave kashtanka a smack on the head with his paw kashtanka jumped back squatted on all four paws and craning her nose towards the cat went off into loud shrill barks Meanwhile the gander came up behind and gave her a painful peck in the back. Kashtanka leapt up and dashed at the gander. What's this? They heard a loud angry voice, and the stranger came into the room in his dressing gown, with a cigar between his teeth. What's the meaning of this? To your places. He went up to the cat, flicked him on his arched back, and said, Fyodor Timofeyitch, what's the meaning of this? Have you got up a fight? ah you old rascal lie down and turning to the gander he shouted ivan ivanitch go home the cat obediently lay down on his mattress and closed his eyes judging from the expression of his face and whiskers he was displeased with himself for having lost his temper and got into a fight kashtanka began whining resentfully while the gander craned his neck and began saying something rapidly excitedly distinctly but quite unintelligibly all right all right said his master yawning you must live in peace and friendship he stroked kashtanka and went on and you red hair don't be frightened they are capital company they won't annoy you stay what are we to call you you can't go on without a name my dear the stranger thought a moment and said i tell you what you shall be auntie 
Do you understand? Auntie. And repeating the word Auntie several times he went out. Kashtanka sat down and began watching. The cat sat motionless on his little mattress and pretended to be asleep. The gander, craning his neck and stamping, went on talking rapidly and excitedly about something. Apparently it was a very clever gander. After every long tirade he always stepped back with an air of wonder and made a show of being highly delighted with his own speech. Listening to him and answering, Roar! Kashtanka fell to sniffing the corners. In one of the corners she found a little trough in which she saw some soaked peas and a sop of rye crusts. She tried the peas. They were not nice. She tried the sopped bread and began eating it. The gander was not at all offended that the strange dog was eating his food, but on the contrary talked even more excitedly, and to show his confidence went to the trough and ate a few peas himself. End of parts one through three.